Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate the installation procedure for our Stream Deck Plus color panel for DaVinci Resolve. This is the Windows version. Now this will give you access to almost all the color parameters within the DaVinci color page. Now I'm going to run through the setup procedure, so if you follow along, you'll be up and running in no time. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to install our MIDI ports because this works a lot on MIDI. So how we do that, you need to get a copy of this free program called Loop MIDI and we've provided the URL in your PDF. And here it is here. And you just download Loop MIDI, go through the installation process, make sure it'll auto start when you restart your computer. You always want to have it running. And when you launch it, this is what you're going to see, except this will be blank for you uh, if you've just installed it. If you're using uh, some of our other products that use MIDI on Windows, you will likely have something similar to this already set up. But we're going to add in a couple of new ports just for this pack. And how you do that, we're going to click on the new port name first. We're going to get rid of this. And we're going to type in color panel underscore in in capitals and it needs to be capitalized the way I'm showing here with capital C, capital P, capital I, and capital N with the underscore and then we hit the plus and that adds it in. And we're going to do a second one it'll be color panel underscore out all in caps. So capital C, capital P, underscore O-U-T in caps. Click the plus and you'll see it will have added it at the bottom here and that's good. We're good to go. We just set it aside. It should always be running in the background. Now once that's all set up we're going to go to your folder that you downloaded from Sideshow FX your Stream Deck Plus color panel for DaVinci Resolve folder. And inside, you're going to see that there is a setup script SD Plus folder. Now, what's in here is that is the scripts that we have created to make all of this run. So what you're going to need to do is take this entire folder and you're just going to drag it to your documents folder. So I'm going to hold down control so I make a copy and you could drag it straight into the documents folder. I already have it there, so I'm not going to do it again, but that's what you would do. It just needs to be dragged and dropped into documents. Now, one other thing we need to do, we're going to open up the marketplace in Stream Deck. We'll go to plugins and we're going to do a search for MIDI. And up pops this plugin here, MIDI by Trevliga Spell. We want to make sure we install that. If you don't have it in your system already, then uh, you'll see this blue install icon here and you'll just click on that and it just takes a second to install it. So once that's installed, you can shut this down and you're ready to start importing. Now the next thing to do is we're going to install the profiles that are part of this package. Now we're going to click on this SD Plus Profile Win folder and inside you see there's a DaVinci Resolve Studio and a DaVinci Resolve Non-Studio. There's two different sets of profiles here, depending on which DaVinci application you're running. There's the studio version, and there's the free version, or non-studio version. So depending on what it is you're running, those are the profiles that you're going to be installing. Now I'm working in the studio version today, so I'll be installing those, but the process is the same for the non-studio. The only difference is, of course, you don't get a Magic Mask profile and you don't get a Dolby Vision profile. Okay, so we're gonna open this up and what we're gonna do at this point is I'm going to make sure that I've got my Stream Deck software running and that I have my Stream Deck Plus device forward in the software, not the XL or, or not the regular 15 key DMK, uh, if you happen to have those devices as well. If you have other devices, they will show up in this list so I just want to make sure that it's the Stream Deck Plus that is selected here. Now we go to the folder, to that uh, profile folder. Like I said, once again, we're working in the studio folder here. We're going to go through and we're just going to double click each one of these and it will install in the Stream Deck. All right, there you go. Once done, there's 18 of these profiles. Now, if you're familiar with our product line, uh, you, you're probably aware that 
you really only install one profile and everything else is contained in that. With the Stream Deck Plus device, we are including several different profiles and, the, and we interconnect them. It's, it, when we have large profiles like this, it's actually easier to manage having several profiles and being able to switch between them. So that is the next step that we're going to do now. So first of all, we're gonna to jump to the, and you'll see this is a list of all the profiles I've got loaded right now, but I'm going to go to the color panel SD plus main. So this is where everything starts and how we jump to the different profiles. Now what these are, these are multi-actions with switch profiles in them. So what that means is that when we click on this button, it's going to do two things, and I'll double click one of them here, and it's going to uh, switch the profile, so it will open up a different profile that we assign, and it will open up, in this case, it will open up the HDR pane in our DaVinci application itself. Let's go back to the main here. What we need to do is we need to assign the profiles for each one of these keys. Very simple process, but I'm gonna demonstrate it one at a time for you just in case there's any confusion. So we double click this, we click on switch profile, go to the bottom here. Because this is telling us it's the primaries wheel, we are going to tell this to open up our primaries profile when this is clicked. That's it. And then we step back out by clicking that once, double click to go into log, click once on switch profile. We're going to have this open up the log profile. Double click HDR, click on switch profile, and this is going to open the HDR profile. And we're just going to continue these. Switch profile, this is the RGB mixer. This is going to be curves. Color Warper, Qualifier, Window, and as you can see, we have three pages in this particular main profile, so we're going to switch to the second page because we have more of these that we want to assign. Double click on Dolby Vision. Select the Dolby Vision, Tracker, Magic Mask, Blur, Key, Sizing, Printer light, and this is not a multi-action, this is just a switch profile on its own. So printer light, we're gonna just point right to printer light. And the same thing with custom, straight to our custom profile. Now there is one other one that we're going to be doing, but it's inside of another profile. So when we get there, we'll assign it. So we're gonna step back out to page one, and we're gonna see how this works. So when I go to my device, and I press on primaries, it jumps to my primaries profile. Now you see we have a back button here. These back buttons in each of these profiles have to point back to our main profile so that we have the ability to jump back and forth. So we'll click on this and we will assign this to our main. Okay, so now we go to the profile. Clicking on this brings us back to the main page. So now I have the closed loop where I can go to primaries and then back to my main. And we're gonna do the same for all of these profiles. So I'll click on log, back to main. So all of these back arrows go to the same place. They all go back to the main page.
And you may or may not be familiar with the Stream Deck Plus device, but just to give you a, a brief overview, that if you want to navigate the different pages in the profiles, very easy to do so. The window above the dials, which we refer to as the dial strip, you can use swiping actions to go between the different pages. So I can move from page one to two, and you can see we have a page indicator on the first dial here. I can swipe to the right to go back to page one. Another right takes me to page three, to the right page two, and again to the right page one. So let's go back to page two here. We need to continue with reassigning our different profiles back to main. So we'll click on Dolby Vision. Now if you wanted, you see that we're going back, when I press this, we go back to the first page of the main, but we started on the second page. Your choice whether you want these to go to the first or the second page. Now I had just done tracker here, and I pointed to the first page. You can change this to go to the second page if you want. Now when I click on this, it takes me back to exactly where I was, the second page of the main. Your choice how you'd like to navigate it. Magic mask, click on that. Main, and we can take this to the second page as well. If you want, and if I wanted, I can change the Dolby Vision one. Click on that, we had it going to page one, we'll just change it to page two. Now all the ones on this second page will go back to the second page of our main. Blur. Main, page two. And if you wanted an even shorter way of doing this, what you can do is what one of the ones you've already assigned, like we just did key here, and we're going to be going to the main on page two. I can right click on this, say copy, Go back, go to the next one we have to do, which is sizing. I can right click and say paste, and it will paste in that exact same key, and now it works. So we don't have to go through the reassignment, and you can do that with any of these. Go to printer light, paste. Now we're going back to the second page. Paste. And there you go. We've got all those assigned. Now I'll go back to custom because you will have noticed that there is one extra key here that we have to assign. This is our load save memory. So we're going to click on this and we're going to point it to load save memory. Now we'll have to click into load save memory and we're going to point it back to that exact same place where we were, which is in custom. Just so the orientation stays the same. So now when I click on load save memory and I go back, I'm going back to exactly where I started from. And then this, of course, takes us back to the second page of main and swiping over takes us to the first page. Okay, so that's the Stream Deck profile part of this. You've got all those installed. You've reassigned them so that they're all pointing to each other. We're gonna step back out here to our, uh, a couple times here to uh, the root of our SideshowFX downloaded folder. There is a keyboard command in here that you're going to need to install. Inside here is just a key file. It's the exact same key file we have in all of our DaVinci products so that they all will call to the same shortcut actions. Now most of this pack works off of MIDI, but there are a few shortcut commands. Namely, if we go over here to our third page, uh, these node navigations will use shortcuts. Pretty much everything else is uh, MIDI script written. But in order for those to work correctly, we want to install this text file into DaVinci Resolve. Now let's hop into DaVinci right now. And we're gonna go to DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customization. 
And you'll see I have it installed here, but how you would do it is you click on this ellipsis here, you say import preset, we're going to navigate to our folder we downloaded from Sideshow Effects into the key keyboard command folder, and this is the file, and we would say open. I already have it, so I'm not going to repeat that process. You would say open, and then you would say save. And then that lines up all of our shortcuts that we've built. Now the next thing to do while we're here is we're going to go through the setup procedure of our script. It's very simple. We'll go to the third page of our main, and you see the large red uh, trackball here. If you're working in the non-studio version, it'll be orange. We're going to click on our load panel key in Stream Deck software. So click on it once, and then go down here to this browse button, and we're going to navigate to our documents folder to that script setup script folder that we just imported into our documents folder. So we're going to go in here and we're going to click on the Sideshow Effects Color Panel Studio.exe file. Now if you're doing the non-studio version you would have installed the non-studio profile and you'll come here and you will click on the non-studio executable file. But since we're doing studio at this point I'm going to select this and what that tells the software is when I click this button it's going to load that script. Now at the beginning of every, of every color session that you do you're going to want to press this button because it activates the script that everything runs off of. So we'll, we'll press this now and because this is the first time that we've run this script it is going to ask us to set it up. It's asking to set the, uh, select the MIDI ports, we'll say OK. Asking us to launch into the selection, say OK. And now we get this dialog box. You want to select this color panel in. That is the one that you had entered in the loop MIDI section. So we want color panel in and we say done reload. And when we do that, the script is launched and you see it sits in our tray at the, at the bottom here, indicating that the script is active. Now before we go through any uh, testing, we want to we test that script, but before we do, there's a couple more procedures we need to take care of. Now you see on our device, we have a reset UI button. Now what this does is it resets the user interface of DaVinci into a layout that our script accepts. Now there are some variations on this, and I'll just go over those in a second, but the easiest thing to do, you can go to Workspace and hit Reset UI, uh, and it does, the same same, it does the same thing as this button, uh, however this button does one extra thing and that is it, it will turn on your scopes for you. So if I turn scopes off for a second and press reset UI, you can see it opens up our timeline, our clips, and opens up our scopes. You can have the timeline uh, and clips operating like this. You can shut timeline off so we just have clips. You can shut the clips off so you just have the timeline. Any one of those combinations are fine. And as long as you're running a 1920 by 1080 resolution or above, everything is going to line up just fine. Now, if you shut off timeline so you don't have timeline or clips, the script won't work. You have to have one of these or both on in order for the script to be identified. Now, one other thing we need to take care of and to be aware of is if I shut the scopes off for a second, we'll turn on the, the keyframes here. You see that we have this uh, split primary and secondary views pinging here. We need to have it in the position you see right now, which is collapsed down with the arrow pointing out, indicating if we click this, it'll push it down. If we have it in this position where it pushes everything down, the script won't work correctly. So we just need to make sure that this is in our collapsed position. And once again, we can always just be sure when we hit the reset UI button, it sets everything up for us. And if you want, the way I'm going to do it here, I'm going to shut off the timeline so we just have the clips. Just saves me a bit of screen real estate. Okay, so now that we have that loaded up and we have reset our UI, now one more setup procedure we have to do with DaVinci is we're going to go to our file, project settings, and we're going to go to the color management section and under Dolby Vision, enable HDR10 Plus and enable HDR Vivid, we are going to check all three boxes. We need to have these enabled whether you use them or not. 
So once they're enabled, you're going to say save, and they will appear on this part of your header tray. This just ensures that everything lines up to the right of this when we press that action on our device. So you must have these selected and present on the header tray, regardless of whether you're using them or not. We're going to do a quick test to make sure that things are lined up. I'm going to swing over to our first page here. I'm going to press primaries, which will, as I said before, it does two things. It opens up our primaries profile on the device and it opens up our primaries pane in DaVinci. We can click on something like tint, for example, and then immediately start rotating our horizontal dial and you can see that we are adjusting the tint value. So we do have a good connection with our script. And that's really all there is to it. It's fully set up now. Everything is going to be working for you. If you want to learn what's involved in each one of the workspace and how to work it, I encourage you to take a look at our navigation video. It goes over everything in a lot of detail and goes through every single profile. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope this pack really helps out in your workflow. And until next time, we'll talk to you soon.